Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, at the end of the last episode, I couldn't stop thinking about this game because I was like, that's really clever how they can mess with your game files and delete characters and they can send you things outside of the game. I thought that was so cool and it just kept me thinking about this game and I wanted to jump back into it. So now that I'm here and recording another episode, I kind of want to mess with these files right here because you guys know when you click the characters, it's only Monica, Natsuki, and Yuri. I wonder if I add Sayori back to the game, will I still have that fucked up face right there or will I change stuff? But I think for now, we're just going to continue with the game as is. So if you guys are cool with that and you're down with that, everybody sit down, buckle the fuck up, because here we go. It's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. <laughs> I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. But I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. That's funny because he usually goes to school with Sayori. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Jay? Whoa. Monica? Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. Sure. It's been a while, right? Ah. Yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. So this is a new game in a world without Sayori, and now Monica is the one coming up to me instead of Sayori. Okay, that's pretty cool. We do know each other, well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did you come in here for anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? <laughs> About that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club! Okay! Calm down with the creepiness, please! Literature? That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Um... <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know. Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hey, Jay. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Ah. I mean, I guess so, but... In that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but... If you could at the very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please? Um... Well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, awesome! You're really sweet, Jay, you know that? Well, you know... It's nothing, really. Shall we go then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. It's not that irresistible. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back! And I brought a guest with me. Uh, okay, this game is starting to get a little bit creepy. Uh, a guest? Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. 
Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Jay. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. So, let me guess. Why is her name Girl 2? You're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? No, I'm not. Natsuki? The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. It's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So, I ran into Jay in the classroom. Yeah, ran into Jay! And he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica! Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to, well, you know. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, Jay? Wait, Yuri makes the tea now and not Natsuki? What in the fuck is going on here? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So, I know you didn't really plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone! I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. Wait, Yuri was the one in the first part of the game that was making tea, right? And Natsuki was the one who made cookies? Or did Natsuki make tea and cookies? I don't remember, but I could have sworn it was Natsuki. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Ah, uh, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh? That's not... Well, maybe Yuri was the one who made the tea all along. Maybe I'm just confusing it. Maybe I'm trying to think of all these conspiracies because this game is starting to get a little weird. Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Jay, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. So you replay the game and then a lot of these lines just repeat, but this is the whole game without Sayori. So real horror is often, yes, I remember these lines. I do remember these lines. Okay, let me skip it a little bit. Let me see if anything new happens. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Jay, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. 
Yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. Okay, let me see if there's any new files. Happy thoughts, log, trace back. Okay, everything's still the same. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. All right, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Yay, writing poems. My favorite. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? I think I would like to read it. Things I like about Papa. I like when Papa comes home early. I like when Papa cooks me dinner. I like when Papa gives me allowance. Why am I getting the chills right now? I like when Papa spends time with me. I like when Papa asks about my friends. I like when Papa asks me about anything. I like when Papa gives me lunch money. I like when Papa comes home before sundown. God damn, Papa does a lot of things. I like when Papa cooks. I like when Papa gives me privacy. I like when Papa doesn't tell me how to dress. How many fucking times have I said Papa already? I like when Papa doesn't comment on my friends. I like when Papa doesn't comment on my hobbies. I like when Papa comes home without waking me up. I like when Papa keeps food in the house. I like when Papa uses his inside voice. I like when Papa leaves my stuff alone. I like when Papa accidentally drops coins in the couch. I like when Papa is too tired to notice me. I like when Papa is too tired for anything. I like when Papa is too tired for anything. What the fuck? Okay. So, uh, we can write a poem about Yuri and Natsuki. Natsuyori. So, let's try to impress Natsuki again. Because I think she's one of my favorites. Her and Sayori were two of my favorite girls. So since Sayori's not here, it's Natsuki time. So let's see here. Let's go with Fluffy. There you go. Natsuki jumped around. Daydream. No, that was Yuri. Okay. Play. Natsuki. Sparkle. Jumpy. Parfait. Because Parfait girls, you know what I'm saying? All these are Natsuki. I am on a roll, baby. Call me Butter, because I am on that roll like this, son. Okay, a few more to go. Let's go with Bubbles. And then we're going to go for Fun. And the last one is going to be Kawaii. Yeah! Most of them are not Suki. I think two were Yuri. Hi again, Jay. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Jay. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Whoa, what the hell was that? Okay, I was looking if there was any new files, and then Natsuki just did some weird-ass shit in the corner of the game. Oh, come on! Like he deserves any slack. You already had to be dragged here by Monica. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, can you fucking move your hair so I can read this shit? I can't see! <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Ah, oh, this game! Oh my god, I fucking love this game. This game is like a big troll. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. I'm sorry, Jay. We'll make sure to put your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots Natsuki with a disappointed glance. Um, anyway, now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you might have interest in picking up a book to read. Did the music just, like, skip or something? I heard it. That was kind of weird. Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now. So it only feels right for me to do something like that, if you ask. Wait, I didn't mean it like that. Ugh. If you don't really want to, then forget I said anything, I guess. Uh, no, it's not that, Yuri. I want to try to be a part of this club. So even if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. Are you sure? I just felt like, well, as the vice president all, that I should help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, 
so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? Okay, so I've seen all that. She gives me a book to read, and then Natsuki comes up, right? And then we go read Parfait Girls? I think that's the case. Ugh! I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. Yeah. So, we are gonna go into the closet right now. And we are gonna... Whoa! Fucking Monica! She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point in keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga? You read manga, right? Ah! Sometimes. Okay, this is also stuff that repeats. I don't think I'm gonna reread the whole thing. I wanna see if there's anything new. Wait, there actually is a new file that dropped in. It says, can you hear me? There's a little devil inside all of us. Beneath their manufactured perception, their artificial reality, is a writhing, twisted mess of dread. Loathing, judgment, elitism, self-doubt, all thrashing to escape the feeble hold of their host, seeping through every little crevice they can find, into their willpower, starving them of all motivation and desire, into their stomach, forcing them to drown their guilt in comfort food, or into a newly opened gash in their skin, hidden only by the sleeves of a cute new shirt. Such a deplorable tangled mass is already present in every single one of them. That's why I choose to not blame myself for their actions. All I did was untie the knots. What in the goddamn is going on? If you guys see me looking to the side, it's because I'm looking at the game files to see if anything new is dropping in. And Natsuki is saying the same stuff that I already read in a previous episode. So I'm just skipping through to see if anything new happens. And also I'm trying to see if any new files drop in there. But I bet you something weird is going to happen here. Natsuki said, my dad would beat the shit out of me if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica's kind of a jerk about it. Ugh, I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, right? So are those her real thoughts? When the letters are in bold like that? Because I've seen it like two times. When she said Monica, and then when she talked about her dad beating the shit out of her if he found the manga. And now Natsuki fell asleep. Hey, Natsuki? Yeah? Suddenly, Natsuki collapses straight into me. Hey! Whoa! Holy shit! Uh, Natsuki? You got a little, uh... You got a little demon in your eyes! Oh, jeez. Natsuki, are you okay? Here. Monica reaches into her bag and pulls out some kind of protein bar. She throws it in Natsuki's direction. Natsuki's eyes suddenly light up again. She snatches the bar from the floor and immediately tears off the wrapper. I told you not to give... Ugh. She doesn't even finish her sentence before stuffing it into her mouth. Don't worry, Jay. She's fine. It just happens every now and then. That's why I always keep a snack in my bag for her. What, just in case she turns all demonic and fucked up? Anyway, why don't we all share poems now? What? Who should I show my poem to first? Let's go for Natsuki since we wrote the poem about her. I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair if I shared mine with her first. That was so weird. Okay, well, let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, um... Natsuki rereads my poem. Never mind. I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Huh? Then what's the point of sharing it in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Uh. In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Ugh. Well, I would be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. You were supposed to show me some dumb poem and make me go, HA! Well, it's not that great, but let me show you what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. I hope you're happy. So, in other words, you're saying you liked it? Ugh. Natsuki's retort gets caught in her throat. Ugh, you're so... You just... You, you don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that. You don't have to go announcing it to the world like you're all self-important. Pretty sure you never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. Natsuki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or loss that she liked my poem. 
In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? Ugh, fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race. I have read this poem before, so we are just gonna skip that! Okay, so last person is Monica. Hi, Jay. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Jay. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mmm. I like it, Jay. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> if you say so. Yep. If you're interested in Natsuki, then always keep a snack on you. She'll cling to you like a puppy. <laughs> That's new. She didn't tell me that one before. Natsuki's dad doesn't give her lunch money or leave her any food in the house, so she's in a fussy mood pretty often. But sometimes she just loses all of her strength and shuts down. Like earlier. This is just a guess, but I think she's so small because her malnutrition is interfering with her adolescent growth. But hey, some guys are into petite girls too, you know. Sorry, just trying to look at the bright side. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in wall. But he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically glance at my surroundings. But my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Or are they simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scrawling playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right there. He's right there. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. Yeah, I don't think I've read this one before. That's new. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very free form, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on the specific points. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Okay, that was the original tip that she had before. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. I'm always looking forward to her tips of the day because they're actually pretty interesting. Phew! I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way- what? The music is fucking up again! There's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Huh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. 
Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant... The language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all! Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it. And Jay did too! Okay, I remember this argument. I remember them arguing like this. Boo! What are they doing? What is going on? Guys? Uh, Natsuki said, Whoa, be careful or you might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri. Oh, my bad. You already do, don't you? Did you just accuse me of cutting myself? What the fuck is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on. Let Jay hear everything you really think. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. Uh. Suddenly, Yuri turns toward me. As if she just noticed I was standing here. Jay! She's... She's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. How did what? Uh... Just sided with Natsuki, just like old times? Okay. Yuri? It doesn't even fucking matter. Natsuki! Yuri! Natsuki! Yuri! Ah! Okay, what is going on here? Natsuki? Oh, okay. Monica? Yes? Um... Hey, Jay. Why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. <laughs> Some president I am, right? I can't even confront my own club members properly. I just wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes. But I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, Natsuki runs out of the classroom. She quickly runs away. Oh dear. Well, it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri is rocking back and forth in her desk with her palms on her forehead. Yuri? I didn't mean it. I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. Jay, please don't hate me. Please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about it by tomorrow. Completely. Anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home now if you want. Yuri looks at me like she wants to say something, but she keeps glancing at Monica. You can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Oh, Yuri wants to tell me something. Well, I'm vice president, so... Please let me take that responsibility today. It kind of sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. Oh, crap. It's not that. It's not that. I just... I didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Jay. It would be embarrassing with you listening. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I'm sorry for causing trouble. But I really... Okay. <sighs> Those jump scares are so unexpected. They get you like 10 times harder than a normal jump scare because they're so freaking unexpected. I mean, a jump scare is supposed to be unexpected, but not with a game like this. They're super unexpected. All right, let's just pick, you know, together and romance, candy, chocolate, 
Puppy, laugh, Papa. Okay, Papa is Natsuki. So the poem was made by Natsuki, which makes sense because she was writing about her dad, who apparently doesn't treat her very well. So the last three are going to be Valentine, Treasure, and Pleasure. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. Wait, let me see. Wait, there's something here. It says, I... I hate this. I can't do anything. Nothing. No matter how many times you play, it's all the same. It would be really, really easy to kill myself right now, but that would mean I don't get to talk to you anymore. All I want is for you to hate them. Why is that so hard? This is Monica sending me some of this stuff, right? I know Monica is the traceback one. Because she said ahaha ah, in one of the things. Monica is the only one who says ahaha ah, like that. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Jay. Uh, hi, Yuri. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression. But the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Um... Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Natsuki is reading manga at a desk. And surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me into the corner of the room. About yesterday, I... I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri... I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Okay, you know what? I'm starting to think that Monica is the one changing everybody's mind. Like, I remember when I told Sayori that I loved her, she was like, why am I not happy? This is supposed to be like the best moment of my life. Why do I feel like there's all these clouds around me? And now Yuri's saying that she never acted that way. And she said that Natsuki never acted that way. And Monica is the only one who's normal. And given the fact that I keep getting all these messages in my game folder, Monica is the one fucking everything up. Even though I've only been here for a couple of days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided there's no way you could be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Uh, Jay? Don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around and... Ah! Uh, sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Ah! No, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man! Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either? Yuri is clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. No, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Um, Natsuki, about yesterday, I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So... Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? I knew this was going to happen because Monica told Yuri that Natsuki is going to forget all about it, and she did. She doesn't even know what the hell's going on. Huh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But... I'll accept your apology anyway, if it helps you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear. Since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. Hehehe. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Nasuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey! Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, oh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I was not! <laughs> what took you so long anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. 
I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. So I'm still impressed. Oh, uh, well thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. <laughs> that's... Monica looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Jay. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica's referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Nah, not really. I choose not to bring up anything that the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki has already run off into the closet. Jay? Um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you would like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Uh, I suppose so. I don't think I could say no to you after you gave that book to me. Well, I guess I need to make sure Natsuki isn't waiting for me. After we finished reading yesterday, she... She's fine! She's reading over there, see? Don't, don't think, think about, about her, her so much. much. She's, She's used to being ignored. ignored. Come on, we're, we're going, going over there. there. What's the story about anyway? Was that supposed to happen or did my game lag? Well... Hmm... I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. And the people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse, and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to... Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. YOU THINK?! But anyway, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not the thing about the limbs. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. Just like this game! Ah. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Jay? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. Yeah, remember when I got a cut from her sharp-ass naifu? She started sucking on the tip of Anime J's finger, and then Anime J did the same thing, so they're both kind of fucked in the head. It's just that this kind of story... It's the kind that challenges you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people, and we're all worthless anyway. Then suddenly... I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts... My whole body gets- WHAT?! I kinda forget to pay attention to other people! It's going so fast, guys! I'm not skipping the text! It does that on its own! It goes really fast and then it just disappears. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Huh. That's... Well, that's true. In fact... I might as well get started reading it, right? Ah, yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! I mean, you don't have to, but... Uh, what are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I put into my bag. This game is creepy. Alright, it's fun if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Oh! Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. 
I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry, I was just bathing in the feeling- What? Yuri, you're- What the fuck is this? It said, I was just bathing in the something of your body. Uh, I do. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Ooh la la! It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Huh? Yeah? To turn the page. Ah, uh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face, and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah. Uh, that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey Yuri, this might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Eh? No, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking the way she second guesses things she says and all that. Ah, uh, that's what you were talking about. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? Never mind. We didn't even get that far yet. So I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> Yuri, are you feeling alright? Eh? Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hands on her chest, as if to feel her heartbeat. I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. Alright, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that about? Jay? Did something happen just now? Huh? I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything? Sorry, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh, no, not really. I was just making sure that you didn't do anything to her. No, nothing! <laughs> don't worry, I believe you, silly. Yuri just does this sometimes, so it's nothing alarming. Alright, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our poems with each other? Huh? Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I just figured we'd get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. Who should I show my poem to first? Let's go with Natsuke. Hmm. Huh. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Then again, if this one was as good as your last one, I would be completely pissed. Well, I guess I wanted to try something a little different this time. Fair enough. You're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. I mean, everyone in the club writes really differently from each other. Maybe you'll find a little influence from all of us. For instance, I noticed that you were spending some time with Yuri today. 
Not that I care who you spend your time with. After all, I was taught never to expect anything from anybody. So it's not like I was waiting for you or anything. Still, you should at least look over my poem. You'll probably be able to learn something from it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can definitely see myself learning something from this. Definitely makes the most sense out of any poem I've ever read. Oh, yeah. Jay! Why didn't you come read with me today? I was waiting for you. I was waiting for a long time. It was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Aw. Why did you ruin it? Do you like Yuri more? I think you're better off not associating with her. Are you listening to me? Yuri is a sick freak. That should be obvious by now. So just play with me instead. Okay? You don't hate me, Jay, do you? Do you hate me? Do you want me to go home crying? The club is the only place I feel safe. Don't ruin that for me. Don't ruin it. Please. Just stop talking to Yuri. Play with me instead. It's all I have. Play with me. Play with me. Okay. Oh, whoa! What? Is not Suki okay? Is she okay? Can I get confirmation that she's okay? Anybody? Anybody out there, please? Hi again, Jay. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. Great job, Jay. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is just totally detached from reality. I don't mean that like it's a bad thing though. But sometimes I get the impression that she's totally given up on people. She spends so much time in her own head that it's probably a much more interesting place for her. But that's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Like earlier. I think if she gets too stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for a long time. Suddenly, the door opens. Yuri! I'm back! Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started sharing our poems with each other. Eh? Huh? Already? I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, so I'm more glad that you took all the time you needed. Alright. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should get my poem now. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. The colors. They won't. Bright. Beautiful colors. Flashing. Expanding. Piercing. Red. Green. Blue. An endless cockfanny of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent. Grating. Waveforms. Squeaking. Screeching. Piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a knife on a breathing rib cage. What? Endless. What the fuck? Delete her. At the end of the first poem, it said, load me. It was save me and load me. Now it says delete her. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to, um... Well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when, um... Who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Please help me. Okay, is there anything new here? No, same files. Okay, I will help you. That's my advice for today. 
Thanks for listening. Is Monica trapped in the game? I think Monica is the one trapped in the game. Let me click on characters. It still says Monica, Natsuki, and Yuri. Okay. Game. I got it. Okay, there's nothing new in any of the files here. So let's show our poem to Yuri. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri smiles and takes a deep breath. I like just holding it. Uh, I mean... The poem turned out good. It's, uh... Well, there are some things you could work on. But that doesn't really matter. It feels like anything written by you is a treasure. Aw, you're so sweet. Ah! Uh, <laughs> that came out a little awkward. Let's move on. Here's the poem I wrote. You don't have to like it or anything. Oh my god, that is too many freaking words. Wheel. Rotating wheel, turning an axle, grinding, bolt head, linear gearbox, falling sky, seven holy stakes, a dock ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a torn harness, parabolic gearbox, expanding what? What does that all mean? <laughs> it doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your pen. Ah... That is, a uh, pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping and... I, um, I just really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. What did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Yes. Okay, more happy thoughts. That is not a special poem. That is very freaking disturbing. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today. So if everyone could come sit in the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Jay joined and we've started with some club activities. But this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members and the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know. What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? This club, it's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way as I did? But that doesn't mean we're against getting new members or anything. Jay, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well... That's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What? Me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't many other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me? She's not taking anything away. No, Jay. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one... I mean, at least for a little bit of time. Things were nice. Natsuki starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki! Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Okay! Who cares about that obnoxious brat? 
I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. <laughs> Nobody, Nobody would cry if she killed herself. I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. But what about you, Jay? What do you want to get out of this club? Yuri repeats the same question as Monica. I decide giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along. And for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the literature club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. With each- What is going on with her eye? Blood was just coming out of her eyeballs. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. Yeah, there's blood coming out of her eyes. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So if you would like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. This is so creepy. All right. Well, maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. Hey, Yuri. Eh? Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday. But I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also a wonderful friend. Monica? I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever. Okay? Me too. Yeah. Let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay. I look forward to it. Shall we go, Jay? Um... Please don't take this the wrong way, but... I'm going to chat a little bit with Jay before we leave. Just to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me, as president. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow! Monica waves as Yuri exits the classroom. Phew! Things have been a little hectic lately, haven't they? Jay, I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. I feel kind of like I'm responsible for that, as president. And I really do care about you, you know. I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With how mean Natsuki is and everything. And Yuri being a little bit, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. You know what I mean? But it's weird, because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. Ah, uh, I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. There are just some things I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things I know only you could understand. So that's why... Wait, not yet! No! That was so bizarre. Like, Monica was trying to tell me something, but the game is just pushing itself forward. And she was like, no, wait! I want to tell you something! But then it just faded to black, and now we're here. That is so freaking awesome. Okay, guys, but I think I'm going to end this episode of Doki Doki Literature Club here. If you guys want to see the next episode as soon as possible, make sure you give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is dead too!